Hello everyone, <clears throat> welcome to this week's standalone lesson. And I thought I would do something a little different today um, and do sort of a demonstration for this project. So it's something that you can take the, the techniques and the tools and stuff like that that I, that I use here and create something of your own. So it's not meant for you to do exactly what I do. As you know, that's not the point of these. Uh, we want them to come from us, right, from ourselves. but. But it's the it's sort of the technique and the um, and the tools I use to create it that I want you to try. So it's my, this idea started when I was doing um, some journaling, um, just about some some personal things, and I drew a card um, from a, one of my oracle decks that I really like, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But. I'm sort of, I, personally, um, with my work, I'm sort of in a new place right now as far as, it's sort of a place of limbo because as many of you know, I lost my, um, a good portion of my income um, as, as a, uh, the, the, you know, source of income for my family. And I, I lost that when Craftsy or Blueprint decided to close which shocked us all, all of the teachers that taught for Blueprint have just been shocked and we're all kind of in the same boat. Um, some of us, it's a huge part of our income. And so we're trying to figure out ways to, um, to replace that, right? And so I've been doing a lot of thinking about it and I really wanna, I really wanna take this moment, right? And, and do something amazing with it um, for, for myself and for the people that I interact with. And, um, which includes you, right? So it, it's it, it's one of those things where a door closes, but that just opens up more opportunities and um, a chance to to grab the bull by the horns, kind of, and and do something great. And so I've tried not. I, I haven't for one moment felt, you know, like this was a bad thing. It, it's it's an inconvenient thing um, in many ways, and but it's forcing me right to to to, to grow. And so. I've been doing a lot of thinking and writing about it. And I drew a card from a deck called the Archetypes um, deck by Kim Kranz of the Wild Unknown. And Kim Kranz started, uh, she's an illustrator. I love her style. She's a very distinctive style um, where she uses a lot of black and white line drawings and then fills it in with this, these brilliant rainbow colors, right? And this deck in particular, the Archetypes deck is rather new to me. And my friend Janet had talked about it, and I've been thinking about it, and I just decided to go ahead and take the plunge and get it. And I'm really, really glad that I did. It's been it's been a wonderful tool for me when I'm doing my self reflection and journaling. And so the card that I drew <clears throat> is this one, and it's the poet, which right away I I had a bond to because that was the hopes for my career, right? To be a poet. That's what I really worked hard on before. I discovered that I, I had um, that I could draw right and that I really could, could do this so um, poetry has always been a big part of my life and so I, I connected to it right away I also really loved the image that I saw because um, I love the blackbirds rising I love this idea of the light within the darkness and all of this potential that I see that's what I see I see potential when I see this card right but also this the importance of 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 looking within too and using that to to um, using that time spent re in reflection and in our inner world to bring something good to the outer world right so I loved it for that <clears throat> but I really um, had a, a shift when I read what was in the guidebook. And guidebooks are funny, you know, with Oracle decks, it depends on the deck. Sometimes guidebooks are more important than the cards, you know, and, and this guidebook is really interesting. So I'm going to, I'm going to go in here and read to you what this says. So the poet is page 75. 
And so the guidebook has a black and white image of the card, which is just as powerful as the colored image. Um, and then it says this, the poet, the artist, the witness, the truth teller. Those are the, the key words for this card. And I hope, um, I hope for those qualities when I think about my work in the world as an artist, as being a witness, as being a truth teller. Um, it's really important to me, and I imagine that it is to you too. You know, and that's one, that's one component of being an artist, of not only documenting our experience of the world, but, but, but through our work, being able um, to be a witness and to be able to spread truth, right? Truth and beauty sometimes. So then it says, the poet's work is to feel immensely and not be afraid. They must seek out truth in the darkest corners of the world and carry it back for all to see. This unique capacity resides within us all, regardless of our relationship to creativity. When the poet energy is present, there is a call for deep honesty and reflection, for seeing the big picture within the little one. The poet rides effortlessly between the personal and the universal. That's really important, right? And, and we talk about that here in other ways. But to be able to take what's personal and immediate in your life and in your experience of the world and, and, and use it as the ingredients to create something that is a universal truth, right? Or something that is... Um, available to all as a benefit of what you have experienced. I mean, we see that a lot with, with certain writers, you know, that, you know, memoirists and not all of them, but some of them have this amazing ability to take their personal experiences and write them down so that they are an experience for all of us that we can relate to with little glimmers from our own life, right? And those things help us, right? They help, they, they guide us to make our own discoveries. Um, poets do that very well, the good poets, right? They distill their experience of life into this powerful essence of truth that we can all recognize ourselves in. So the poet writes effortlessly between the personal and the universal. It's possible that others may not seem to listen or care about the poet's work, but do not be discouraged. The words of the poet ring true for centuries to come, soothing the wounds of despair and violence that captivate our world. The poet's work is never finished. Find your voice and trust that the wind will carry it. Gosh, right? Find your voice and trust that the wind will carry it. We all have different truths from our lives that the wind can carry to help others you know there's a whole spectrum of experience that we all have I love that so much find your voice and trust that the wind will carry it so around the edges of the guidebook it has other things over here it says it is likely there is a poem or poet that was meaningful to you at a young age Revisit and reread it now. Be open to its message. So if you have time, think back to a poet or a poem or a, a book of poems that were influential to you. For me, I mean, there are many, but I mean, I would say the most influential poets for me have been um, Jane Kenyon and Mary Oliver. Um, Mary Oliver is very well known. Um, Jane Kenyon, not so much unless you're really, you know, she's not someone you see quoted all the time. Both have been incredibly meaningful to my life and helped me open my eyes, you know, to, to things that I needed to see. So try that. Think about, think about that. Over on this side, it says, the poet is related to the shaman and the bridge. These archetypes hover in the meeting place between the everyday and the sacred. So the shaman and the bridge are two other archetypal cards in this deck. But the, the important part of this message are those two words, every day 
and sacred. The meeting place between the everyday and the sacred. And don't we talk about that here? And, and I mean, you know, especially when we're doing things like seeing drawing, right? We're taking something that's, you know, an everyday thing like this magnolia seed pod, right? And by drawing it and paying close attention to it and lovingly documenting it on paper, it becomes so sacred because we truly see it, right? Everyday things are sacred. They are the most sacred. High ideas are nowhere near as sacred <laughs> as the everyday things of our lives when we really open our eyes and pay attention to them. The miracle of, of the life that surrounds us and our own lives, right? So that's lovely. And then at the bottom, she always gives um, two things. One, when it's in its light, um, when the poet archetype is in its light form, it is clairvoyant, wise, and timeless. When it's in, in dark or shadow, um, it can mean harmful words or a sharp tongue or thwarted creativity. Boy, I felt that lately, <laughs> you know, frustration, you know, can tend if, if we're not present in the moment and we're not in control of our reactions, you know, frustration can lead to harmful words and sharp tongues, which doesn't serve anyone, especially not ourselves, right? And then she always says, go deeper. And she gives you, she gives you some ideas, right? And this one says, spend one hour reading poetry, then one more. Some of the other ones, like Go Deeper, she'll give specific examples. Read the Tao Te Ching, Chapter 1, and imagine the mother of 10,000 things. Right? So she, she gives you specific things you can do to experience this archetype. So my gosh, I, I mean, what an amazing um, card to help me with my self-reflection on where I want to go because it brought out all the joy <laughs> that I have for my work, all the mystery of it, all my deepest, you know, it, it, um, desires for the work I do in the world were, were present here, right? To be able to see the big picture in the little one, to ride effortlessly between the personal and the universal, Soothing wounds of despair and violence that captivate our world. These things are always in my heart, right? And I don't always give them enough room. And so I, this was a really helpful, helpful card for me. And I hope it is for you too. You know, listen to, listen to this a few times if you need to, or take a screenshot of this page, right? And think about how it applies to your own life, to your own creative practice. Okay, to so the way we show up in the world right now, it's so important that we show up in, in, from a place of equanimity, right? Okay, so the other part of this is that I really, I really wanted to um, be inspired by Kim's artwork. So you can even see on here, you know, how she does this simple line work and then uses brilliant color um, to fill it in. So you can imagine how colorful these are. But her line work is pen and ink. She uses fine liners, I think, um, per, you know, permanent ink. And she creates these beautiful line drawings, and then she makes these beautiful washes to bring them to life. Really, really inspiring. So instead of copying her artwork, I, I just want to be inspired by that that black ink, right, as the sort of substance that, that lets the color speak even louder. <laughs> I can't explain it very well, but I think you, you know, you, you can form your own ideas about why this sort of artwork is powerful, okay? So we're not going to really look at her work, but we're going to take a piece of paper and we're going to take some permanent ink. So permanent ink means that when you put water on it, it doesn't bleed and wash away and mix into other things. So some examples of permanent ink would be Sharpie markers, right? Sharpie pens, um, fine points, thick points, it doesn't matter. Sharpies are permanent ink. So when, when, when they're dry, you can put um, watercolor over them and it won't budge. 
Okay, so we use Sharpies like to do transparency tests when we're doing watercolor tests, things like that. So permanent ink. Other examples are the Pentel brush pen that we've used here many times. Pentel brush pens have permanent ink in them and they're, they're just like using a paintbrush dipped in ink, but it's very portable and not messy, right? Um, another thing is to use um, a dip pen. This one was made for me by my friend Janet, one of our dandelions here. And then to use um, an ink that is, that is permanent with it, all right? There are many kinds. This is actually a permanent um, Japanese ink. Um, but there are many kinds of permanent ink that you can buy. Um, you don't have to buy it for this, but you could just use a Sharpie. Sharpies are easy to get. I'm just going to use my brush pen. All right, so that's another way you could do it. You could also use fine liners like Pigma's, um, Pigma Micron pens. Um, they look like this. A lot of people have these, right? And they're archival ink. They come with these really fine tips, All right? So you could use that as well. So we're gonna start with just making some designs with ink, right? And I do kind of want to take this circle. I, I'm, I'm really um, captured by that, by the circle of light and the darkness. And so I want to draw a circle with a pencil so um, it's easier for me. I think I'm gonna do it right about here. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my pen. I'm gonna start with a fine liner actually. And I'm gonna use my pen to draw. And I'll just start with lines coming out from different quadrants of my circle. And I'm gonna fill this in with these little lines. All right, that could be very boring to watch, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off so I can do a little time lapse on that part. Okay, so now that that's done, before, um, I, I just wanted to, to point out that to get a kind of even spacing of lines like this, it's really helpful if you start with in the four quadrants of something and then go in, in between and then in between again until you get, you know, the, the amount that you want. If I just started here and then just started going around, it wouldn't have an even effect. At least it wouldn't for me. Some people can do that. I can't, so... <laughs> All right, so now I want to take um, a darker pen, and I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I'm going to start with one, and I'm going to start a little bit inside. And I'm going to go around, and I'm going to put these marks inside. I'm doing four marks, but, you know, you guys do your own thing. Whatever feels right to you is what you should do. I just like the idea of this light space gradually becoming darker. And you are free, you're free to do exactly what I'm doing. But if you have a different idea, I hope you'll go with your own idea. Because that's one of the beautiful things on Patreon in our community section, even though we do you know, we're all doing the same projects. When you share your work, it's very clear how individual how individual we all are with our marks, right? And that's that's the whole point. This is just a starting place for you. Feel like I need to even it out a little bit. There. 
Okay. So now, um, maybe I want to fill in some, some more, some black, right, around it. So it's a little bit um, darker still. So what I could do here is I could use the side of my pen, right? And I could go start inside and go out a little bit more to make it even a little bit darker. So I'm trying to bridge between light and dark. So if you're if you're using ink, you could just use a paintbrush. The important part is that it's permanent, right? If you're using a Sharpie, you could just color in a darker space. Okay, and then I can go in between those. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm not looking for order or I'm just rhythmically putting marks down to fill in a space, okay? To create an effect that I wanna create. And I love it. I just love it. All right, so now I might even wanna go one further, I think. And so this time I'm gonna go like this and then like this and like this and like this, because then it'll seem really thick at the edge. Trying to really fill that in. to make it as dark around there as I can. Cool, huh? There. That's pretty effective, I think. All right. Our job now is to just walk away, have some tea, have a glass of water, do a little stretch, and let this dry completely. It has to be completely dry before we add watercolor, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I think this is dry, right? And you can always test it. You can take just a tiny bit in an area that you're worried about, and just put a little water down and see what happens. Seems like it's okay, all right? It does, you know, I left it about 30 minutes, okay? Now before I start, I wanna get rid of that pencil line that I drew, so I just take an eraser, okay? Get rid of that. Now we're gonna put some water down and drop color in, all right? And I have, I chose my Kurataki um, Hanzai paints. And these are just really brightly colored um, Japanese uh, watercolors. But any watercolor will be fine. Um, this was just readily available to me and um, very brightly colored. And I wanna think about the rainbow. So a yellow, an orange, a red, a blue, a green, a violet, okay? And I'm gonna start with clean water and I'm gonna leave that center circle without water, okay? So I'm just gonna go around it and try to make a circle 
so it stays without water. So I want that inside to be just the color of the paper for now. And I'm gonna take my water and move it around, okay, clean water, and move it around to the edge of my ink. And I'll just stop at the edge of the ink, okay? Make sure I've got nice a nice glaze of water all around. And that's almost like an ice skating rink for my paint to skate over. Okay? And then I'm gonna choose my colors and I'm gonna start with yellow. I'm gonna pick up some yellow and I'm just gonna drop it in. Maybe I'll pick a yellow that's a little warmer, too. Just drop it in. And then I'll choose some orange. And just drop in some orange. And then some red. And then some violet. And then some blue. And then some green. And I'll put some green just sort of around the edge. And you can go in any order you want, and you can use any colors you want. And then I'll just take some water on my brush and just sort of sprinkle it around so all those colors have the chance to move even more. All right, and at the bottom, I can just take clear water and just sort of pull it down. There. Okay, now the center I left all right, but what I could do is I could choose a shimmer, and I think I'll choose a silver shimmer. And just fill in that center space with a silver shimmer and let it, let it go out into the other colors. And, and maybe I'll even take a little bit of a gold and just drop it in. And let it move out, okay? I could even take a little bit of my silver shimmer and sprinkle it on. And now I sit back and I let it dry. I want to show you guys how many deer are in my backyard right now and that's not even all of them but some of them just went behind the garage. Oh, I 
<laughs> Isn't it something? Okay, so this is not completely dry yet. Um, you should probably wait until yours is completely dry. It's still damp. I really put a lot of water on this. All right, but it's dry enough to show you a few things. So if I tilt this, I don't know if you can see it, but the sparkly paint I put on is really shimmering. It's beautiful, brings some light into it. But the other thing I noticed, well, first of all, the colors all sort of rush down and blend it into just the clear water down here at the bottom, which is so beautiful. I love it. And then the other thing is that um, my center that I left light pulled in some of the paint, which is fine, right? But I really want um, I really want that light to be in there. So I have a couple choices. I can use some more silver or white paint and fill it in again. But I also have pastels that I love. And I think I'm going to do that instead. So I'm just going to take um, a little piece of white pastel. And I'm going to... No, maybe not. I changed my mind. Well, it's too wet. So when it dries, I will, um, I will do. Really, I personally really want that to stand out. I, and I kind of thought the pastel would be interesting. So I'll wait and do that. And then of course I'll take a picture of it to upload into the video at the end. But what I want to do first um, is I want to write at the bottom I'm gonna write the poet. I'm just gonna come down here at the bottom and I'm gonna I'm just gonna write um you know I changed my mind. So let's see, page 75. I'm gonna look and see what this says again. There's something that I really liked. It is um personal universe. Um I'm trying to find it. There is a call for Diva to see the big picture. The poet rides effort, effortlessly between the personal and the universal. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the meeting place between the everyday and the sacred. All right. Actually, I'm gonna use a smaller pen. So I'm gonna write that here. The meeting place. Between the everyday and the sacred. And then I'm going to put my chop on it. I've got the world's worst rubber stamp, and I don't know why, but it truly was way too wet. And I'm gonna put my chop on this. Hmm, I could put it right in the middle. No, I'm gonna put it right here. So my chop is my signature. I have a video about that on my YouTube channel too. So I am not going to send this dandelion lesson out. This one I'm going to keep, and I'm going to let it dry, and I'm going to finish my light on the inside. And then I'm going to tuck it into the book that I'm reading right now and use it as a bookmark. And so every time I open my book, I'm reminded of this, okay? I'm reminded of the poet archetype and what that means for my own creative practice, for my own life, for my own way of showing up in the world, okay? That's it, it's that simple. All right, these things, you know, when we do dandelion lessons, we mostly um, want to send them out into the world or give them to someone else, right? But every now and then, it's important to keep one for ourselves, to remind us about something that we're working on in our life. And so I'm gonna tuck this into my book. And every time I open my book, I'll be reminded. All right, everybody, that's it for today. Um, for those of you on Patreon, I will be back um, tomorrow with one more lesson for the week. And other than that, I will see you next week. All right, take care. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And I will see you very soon.